Hey guys, good evening. Hey, I want to spend a little time talking about um, the order of events that's going to occur as Jesus returns for his faithful believers and um, takes them away to uh, safety and then uh, the events that are going to follow and then how we lead into the, uh, the Great Tribulation. So I created a one-page summary of events for everybody here to um, to take a look at and uh, maybe share with their with their friends and family who are not uh, aware of what's going on. Now, for us who are end time watchers, we are living and breathing this stuff. And um, it's just as a disclaimer, th this is this is my my ideas here. This is what uh, a lot of people kind of maybe already know. Mostly, um, I don't say it's perfect, but you guys can uh, take this for what it is. You can. Uh, Download this document uh, from under the comment section. It'll be a Word document, and you can update it as you see fit. So don't just take my word for it. If you see something you want to change, go ahead and change it. And uh, print it out and give it to whomever you want to. But for me, when you try to speak to people and your family and your friends that, about these coming events, th there's so many things to talk about. It can get confusing. We know from the prophetic words that once the events begin, they're going to fall like dominoes, and it's going to be one event after another. So I know everybody here knows, talks about the California earthquake, the New York City earthquake, the peace agreement, the cosmic event, uh, the red skies, uh, the God taking the children, uh, blaming it on the aliens, the governments will blame it on the aliens, the three days of darkness, um, the, the, 40, the time of trial, the 40 days time of trial, the beginning of the Great Tribulation, the FEMA camps, the RFID chip, all this stuff is just swirling around in our heads. And the minute we try to t start to tell people about this, it's just, it gets too confusing. So take this, print it out, and um, if you're if you're okay with it, give it to your friends and family and go over it. Uh, if not, you want to change it, go ahead and change it. So this is just my, my two cents on the whole thing. So what I see is this. I see, uh, based upon the patterns in Scripture, I see an initial harvest of faithful believers during a seven day period that's just that's my gut feeling on it and then followed by a 40 day harvest of the lukewarm who become refined and I have a picture here and we'll go over this picture in a little bit um, I got it right here so I see a seven day period for I guess the faithful I would call this the bride and the, the bee taken I think there's gonna be a couple departures over that time and then a secondary harvest of the lukewarm for 40 days that will occur afterwards and we'll get into that but let's go through the um, the events all right so what I see here is I see from a this is a mixture of prophetic words in scripture I see an, the events beginning with a California earthquake followed by a New York City earthquake followed by a cosmic event in the sky and then mixed in to this and I, I can't pinpoint this is Trump's peace agreement that has the two-state solution to divide the land of Israel. We know this is a no-no for Joel 3, God's word. Trump's doing this. I don't know why he's doing it. He doesn't read the Bible. He's ignorant. Pence, I don't know why Pence isn't there to, to tell him not to do this. I think this is why Tillerson got got fired because he knew better. He Tillerson knows the Bible. Okay, so I can't tell you exactly when the land, this peace agreement is going to happen with respect to the California earthquake. Probably at the same time. I don't know. So where do I get the California earthquake, the New York City earthquake, and the cosmic event? Well, there was a prophetic word from uh, Warrior Princess that came out in uh, 2014. It goes like this. It says, A great earthquake is upon you. It will strike suddenly and without warning and will hit California first, then New York City. Once this happens, the cosmic event is not far off. Surely I will rescue the children. Okay. So that fits into my timeline because I have the I have the rescue of the children round about the cosmic event. That's where I see. Here's the cosmic event on my timeline right here. Cosmic event. Three days of red skies, then three days of darkness. That's how I see them. We'll we'll look at this again. So let me get back to my uh, my document here. Okay, so that's where I get this. Okay, then when the cosmic event occurs, the cosmic event may be a couple days or a day, I don't know which, but there's been prophetic words that say it's going to begin with colorful lights in the sky. It'll be like a 4th of July aha moment. People will be loving the way it looks. And then it will 
transform into a ominous uh, setting, dark sky, and a huge object is going to appear in the skies. It's going to it's going to blind. It's going to cover up the sun and call cause some sort of eclipse, not the darkness yet, I don't think, and freak people out. Then after uh, this event occurs with the object in the sky, I think that's the day the children are taken. It's my opinion. Um, then the sky is going to turn red for three days, and we're going to have three days of warning. Three days of warning, red skies, and then we have three days of darkness. So round about this time when these skies turn red and this object is seen in the sky, um, I see the elect of God, the 144,000, at this point, I don't, whether it's this day, the day before, the day after, I don't know which, they're going to be taken and they're going to be trained in the supernatural dimension and when they're going to be sent back when the darkness begins. I see them coming back when, right, when the darkness occurs and they're going to uh, they're going to be changed and they're going to shine, they're going to rise and shine. Um, but there will still be some of the bride left to go through the three days of warning and the three days of darkness. So I see the bride in a couple different groups, but we don't need to get into that now. That's just, you might know which part you are, whether you're going to be here through the th three days of red skies, into the darkness, or taken. I don't know. Some people are going to go with the children and not come back. It's, it's confusing. That's why people have these different ideas, because I think people are shown different things based upon what they're going to be doing. So during the three days of darkness, which we'll get into in a minute, uh, these 144,000 will rise and shine, and they're going to go out and invite people to the wedding banquet. So like I said, at some point during this cosmic event, and before the three days of darkness, uh, the children, the little ones, the innocent ones of the world will be taken, to, taken by God's angels to heaven or to some place on earth for protection. The aliens obviously won't be taking them, but the governments of the world will be blaming the aliens for the mass alien abductions, what they'll say. Do not talk to the aliens. Don't invite the aliens into your house. Have nothing to do with them. The aliens are part of Satan's plan to trick the left behind. Now, if you go into a church and you start talking about aliens, they're going to laugh you out the front door or kick you out or whatever. The aliens are alluded to in the Bible. It, Jesus even says, for false Christs and false prophets will perform great signs and wonders. These are great signs and wonders are supernatural tricks performed by the fallen angels. Now, how do we know the fallen angels will be here? Well, the Bible tells us that. But before we get to that, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 speaks of that the coming of the lawless one will be the activity of Satan with all power, false signs and wonders and wicked deception. They're going to be fooling these people. Okay, this strong delusion is uh, in Greek really means supernatural trickery. Okay, in Revelation 12 9, we know that this ancient serp serpent, Satan, the great dragon, will be cast down to the earth and his fallen angels with him. So when these fallen angels show up, they're going to they're gonna announce that they are our space brothers and they're here to help. Okay, and we learn about these fallen angels in Jeremiah 5 that they're an ancient nation, like this ancient serpent. And their quiver is an open tomb. Um, they are mighty warriors, which means angels. And they're going to eat up your harvest and eat up your sons and daughters. They're flesh-eating monsters, essentially. So, back to the study. So, we see that um, the th and then on the, I guess, back to the three days of darkness. When we After we see the three days of red skies, we're going to see three days of darkness. Now, where do we get this from? If we go to Bob's blog, she tells us that the darkness will descend within three days of the cosmic event appearing. The darkness will commence with an earthquake. So we have three days, we have the cosmic event, and three days of warning, and then three days of darkness. That's how that works. So it's a six-day six period, and that's what I show here in this. So three days of darkness, three days of red skies, three days of darkness, then I see a rapture, and we'll get into that in a minute. And I see a rapture of the bride, and a rapture of the guests. And then we have 40 days time of trial. Okay. Get back to the document. Okay. So, okay, so the darkness is going to descend. We're going to have uh, the 144,000 and the bride of Christ. They will be shining during this time. Uh, this is the first harvest at the end of the three days. So the warnings have gone out about the darkness. Do not go outside. Stay indoors. Close and lock your doors. Windows, blinds, shades. Do not even look outside. And uh, have copies of Psalm 91 everywhere on your doorpost. Anoint your 
your doors and your windows with oil and the like and at the, at the end of the three days of darkness there's going to be some kind of rapture now we see that in the book of Hosea uh, I think it's here okay so in Hosea we see after the peace deal I'm in Hosea chapter 5 um, here's the peace deal the princes of Judah are like those who move a landmark and the Lord will pour his wrath on them Trump's peace deal they're moving the boundary lines what this says then the Lord's going to take away the little ones Hosea verses 14 Jeremiah 50 confirms that that it's little ones that are being taken and then in Hosea 6 we see this group of people who are running to the Lord Lord they're coming they're going back and this is the first left behind group and these people claim that the Lord has torn us away then after two days they're revived and transformed and on the third day they're raised up so I see this Hosea 5 and 6 right here Hosea 5 14 the little ones are taken here and after three days there's another rapture that's what I see there so there's some scripture to talk about that okay so then we have 40 days of testing where does this come from well there's 40 day periods of testing all through the Bible Jesus himself went through a 40 day period of trial and then at the uh, Jesus also taught us in the Lord's Prayer if you if you practice it by saying the um, if you say it by saying the modern version he says in there instead of leading us into tem not into temptation we say save us from the time of trial which is a 40 day period it's mentioned in a bunch of modern day prophetic words and at the end of the 40 days is the rapture now during these 40 days is going to be basically hell on earth do not go to any of the government camps don't take any food or assistance from the demonic governments so where do we get this how do I get the rapture is at the end of the 40 days um, if I go to rapture harvest in the Bible this is first uh, Thessalonians 417 look what it says is for this we declare by the word of the Lord that we who are alive who are left and that word in the Greek is left behind until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep for the Lord himself will descend with a cry of a command the voice of the archangel and the sound of the trumpet of God the dead in Christ will rise first I think the dead in Christ rise first on the first day of darkness arise and shine then we who are alive who are left behind will be caught up together with those who went ahead of time to meet the Lord in the air now let, let's not get into a big argument about this some people want to argue about this verse but it basically says we who are left behind and this group that is raptured taken at the end they are obviously left behind before these groups up here okay so let's see here uh, with that so yeah and then afterwards after this rapture occurs from those who are left behind and there's lots of dead bodies everywhere the great tribulation begins now the Bible speaks of a 42 month period where the Antichrist is going to rule and then after that 42 month period the Lord returns um, the new world order is thought to be a 10 king coalition from Revelation 13 the Antichrist will rule and will come from these 10 kings or will somehow actually he'll kill three of them it says and then it says uh, we learn from Revelation 13 and do not take the mark or the RFID chip this is the mark of the beast we are all children of God and when we take this this chip it's going to change our DNA it's going to make us children of Satan at that point we are not we're not children of Adam at that point do not go into any of the sanctuary camps um, these were built these FEMA camps were built to protect people I'm sorry to house people after these catastrophic events they're all over the country and all over the United States then I have a summary down here of the three departures at least the first one 144,000 little children and the bride of Christ during the days of darkness and then the body of Christ those who are refined at the end of the 40 days so you guys can download this document and if you want to change it go ahead and change it. it's up to you I just wanted to give you guys a blueprint on what I see now I got a couple things I'd like to talk about um, Here's some prophetic words. Here's a prophetic word from Barb. She says, Israel laid will be laid to waste before it is divided. So my thought is, is that um, Isaiah 17 is going to happen. Israel's going to nuke Damascus. 
Um, so it'll be laid to waste. And then Israel will be forced to sign into that peace deal. That's when the, the Antichrist comes. I don't see this peace deal happening with Trump beforehand, even though he's trying to push it. Um, I want to go back to the study and say, and people might say, hey, I don't understand. Why are you, you know, this here is a pre-tribulation rapture. Why are you, why are you talking about a pre-tribulation rapture? Well, uh, when you study the book of Zechariah, you see an interesting thing here. If you go to Zechariah 9, I've talked about this before. Zechariah 9, verse 14, says this, The Lord will appear over them. His arrows will go forth like lightning. These arrows are the harvest workers, 144,000. They're sent out ahead of him. The Lord will sound the trumpet. On that day, the Lord God will save them as the flock of his people, like the jewels of a crown. They will shine in the land. Okay, so this Hosea 9, this Zechariah 9, 14 is essentially the same as 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Go up to Zechariah. The Lord will appear over them. And with the sound of the trumpet, and the Lord God will sound the trumpet. So 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 is essentially the same as this Zechariah 9, 14 through 16. So Zechariah 9, based upon the layout in this book of Zechariah, is before Zechariah 11. In Zechariah 11, that's where the Lord God calls to the Antichrist. He says, become the shepherd of the flock doomed to be slaughtered. So the Lord himself puts this Antichrist as a shepherd ahead of, in charge of a flock doomed to be slaughtered. Do you think the Bride of Christ, if there wasn't a pre-tribulation rapture, and the whole world was left here to deal with this, that the Lord would call his own bride a flock doomed to be slaughtered? And then you can look at the placement of Zechariah 11. Zechariah 11 uh, appears to be chronologically after Zechariah 9. So to me, this proves a pre-great tribulation rapture, beyond a reasonable doubt. So all the argument can just stop. People just want to just, for some reason, they want to throw up these post-tribulation guys. Want to just throw this up in our face. This is it right here, guys. There's no. This is the smoking gun for a pre-trib rapture. All right. Um, I think I went through pretty much everything in here. So print this thing out as it is, or you can go in and change it as you see fit. It's up to you. Um, let me go to my document here and show you how I see this. So. Um, what I didn't talk about was I see an orientation for the 144,000 ahead of time. I don't know if it's three days or not, but I see them being going to some sort of Revelation 4.1. If you go to Revelation 4.1, it says that a door is opened up, a trumpet sounds, and a group is taken like a John, like a John the Apostle, the disciple, somebody who's close to the Lord, and the Lord says in Revelation 4.1 that he's going to tell you of the things to come. And then these guys will show back up again, and they're going to be telling everybody what's going on, some kind of training period. Then I see when the cosmic event occurs here, the children are taken, some of the bride leave, and then some of the bride are left behind to warn. So these are the, these are the red sky days. Right? And then the great earthquake happens here. Great earthquake here. And then we have the three days of darkness. Right through here. Like it says there. And then during that darkness, there appears to be multiple different raptures. This is the time where the Lord shows up. He says he stands at the door and he knocks. And anyone who opens the door, he will, he will come in and he will basically have a last supper with them. He will wash their feet. He'll do communion, just like he did with the, the disciples. And there'll be people in the house that will be saved that evening, that night. And then at some point, I've seen references to uh, Wendy Lee saying a rapture of the guests who accept the invitation to the wedding banquet. Now the guests leave in their natural human bodies. They're not given a, a supernatural body at this point. But the bride is transformed. Okay, so we have a seven-day period followed by a 40-day period. Now during this 40-day period, I would say there's a portion of the bride that comes back and they are harvest workers through this 40 days time of trial. If you go to Jeremiah 31, you actually see this reference. I'm not going to go there now. So let me think here. Um, okay, 
So I don't want to take this thing to go too long, but I do want to show you a Bible verse. Here's a Bible verse that's uh, in first in Colossians 1 13. It says, He, the Lord, has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son. I think this is the transference, the transfer, the translation during the days of darkness for the bride. That's what I see there. Translated during the realm of darkness. That's what I see. These. That's what Colossians 1.13 is pointing to. Over here, the harvesting bride and those who have been refined, they're taken up in the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Those who are alive and left behind go up there. And this is Matthew 24. When he goes out, he calls in his elect. The elect is this harvesting bride that's taken up at the end. So somewhere during here, the abomination of desolation potentially happened. So, guys, that's my thought on it. But back to this. Now, I don't want to confuse things and get people worked up about what's going to happen when. But this thing right here, this summary, I think is a good way to just teach people about the coming events. And the big thing that I see is the problem is, is when the kids are taken, that everybody's going to blame the aliens or think the aliens did it, and they, they're going to cozy up to these aliens. And what it says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 about these, this strong delusion is going to cause a lot of people to believe into this stuff. So as far as the aliens go, do not invite them indoors. Do not look outside, you know, the whole nine yards with the three days of darkness. And with that, guys, I think that's it. Download these documents as you see fit, and God bless you, and have a great day.